Hi everyone, welcome back to the lecture series of Tribology and Technology. I am Neha Joshi, Assistant Professor in Mechanical Engineering Department at LG Institute of Engineering and Technology. Let us continue our ch second chapter that is Friction, Wear and Lubrication. In previous session we covered different topics like what is dry frictions, then different theories of dry frictions and friction measurement method. Okay, now in today's session we will discuss about the different topics like uh, what is stick slip motion, then what is wear, then classification of wear and factors affecting wear. Okay, now first of all we will discuss about what is stick slip motion. Okay, the stick slip motion also known as slip stick phenomena or simply stick slip is the jerking motion that can occur while two objects are sliding over each other. Stick slip phenomenon is closely related to friction instability which occurs due to a large difference in the value of static and kinetic coefficient of friction. Okay? So, I further repeat, stick slip phenomena is closely related to the frictional instability. Okay? Friction instability occurs due to the large difference in the value of static and kinetic coefficient of friction. If the contacting surface having a reasonably large difference between the coefficient of static friction and the coefficient of kinetic frictions are subjected to a tangential force or sliding velocity which varies with the time, there is a larger fluctuation of friction phase. Due to the kinetic and uh, uh, sliding velocity difference, it varies the large fluctuation of frictional force. Okay, so due to the large fluctuation of frictional force, the relative motion between the two contacting surface is in the form of jerk or oxy oscillation, which is known as a stick slip motion. Okay, so now we will discuss about what is wear. Now, wear can be defined as the progressive loss or removal of material from one or both surfaces in contact. As a, relative, a result of relative motion between them, wear is not a material property, but it is a response of engineering system. Wear takes place by mechanical process, chemical process or by combination of mechanical and chemical process. Wear is not a material property, but it is a response of engineering system. Friction and wear are two distinct system response. High friction not necessarily means high wear. Okay, so due to friction and due to wear, your component may fail. Now, what is wear? Wear is a single most influencing factor which shorten the effective life of a machine or its components. For example, a difference between the weight of a new truck and one that is completely worn out is just a matter of few kilograms. There are a large number of examples where wear is undesirable. Few of them are bearings, gears, caps, piston and cylinder, brakes, clutch, tires, oil cells, etc. There are few examples where wear is desirable. It is necessary. Some of them are machining, then grinding, polishing, writing with the pencil, okay, extra when wear is desirable. Okay, so now we will uh, we will classify the wear. Maybe wear may be classified in two categories. First one is major wear and second one is minor wear. Now major wear can be divided into four parts. First one is adhesive wear, then abrasive wear. Third one is surface fatigue wear and corrosive wear. Okay? And the minor wear can be divided into three parts. First one is fretting, then solid erosion and fluid erosion. Okay? Now, first of all, we will discuss about the different types of major wear. First one is adhesive wear. Now, what is adhesive wear? Adhesive wear is due to the adhesive at the point of contact between the two contacting surfaces having a relative sliding motion. Adhesive wear takes place when the two contacting surfaces having a relative sliding motions and are pressed against each other as you can see here in the diagram. 
When the two surfaces are pressed against each other, the contact occurs at the asperities on the two contacting surface. Due to high contact pressure, the plastic deformation will take place at the points of contact. Okay? This leads to the cold welding or adhesion at the points of contact. These welded contacts get shear off during sliding, resulting in detachment of a fragment from one surface and its attachment to the other surface or formation of loose wear particles. Okay, so first one is adhesive wear. Next one is abrasive wear. Now what is abrasive wear? When a hard surface slides against a soft surface. Okay, when a hard surface slides against a soft surface, the plugging or digging of the surface by the asperities on the hard surface or by the interact particle is known as abrasive wear. The abrasive wears result in a series of groove on the soft surface. Okay, the abrasive wear is a like micro cutting process. Further, it is uh, classified in two ways. First one is two body abrasive wear and second one is three body abrasive wear. Now, what is two body abrasive wear? In two body abrasive wear, a rough hard surface slides against a relatively soft matting surface. The example of two body abrasive wear are grinding, cutting and machining. In three body abrasive wear, the rough hard particles trapped between the two sliding surfaces cause abrasive wear on one or both of the surfaces. Okay? The example of three body abrasive wear uh, we can take as lapping, lapping process, then polishing, abrasion in sliding contact bearing, abrasion in piston cylinder motion. Okay? Now, Third one is surface fatigue wear. Now what is surface fatigue wear? The surface fatigue wear occurs when the contacting surface having theoretical point or line contact are subjected to cyclic contact loads. After a certain number of load or stress cycle, the failure begins at, as micro cracks on the surface or in the surface region. These cracks are gradually developed into the surface pit. The surface fatigue wear is also known as a pitting. Okay? It is important to note that the amount of material removed by the surface fatigue wear is not as a substantial as in case of adhesive or abrasive wear. However, the sur uh, surface fatigue wear, which is also known as pitting, is more harmful when the failure begins in a micro crack. It cannot be seen by naked eye. By the time crack becomes it visible, the failure of surface is almost over. The example of surface fatigue here we can take uh, pitting in the gears. Okay, then in the rolling contact bearings, then uh, we can see it in the cams and followers. When two contacting surfaces having the theoretical point or line contact are subjected to high repetitive contact stresses, the wear which initiate the micro cracks and progressively lead to the formation of pits, which is known as a surface fatigue wear. Now, next one is corrosive wear. Now, what is corrosive wear? The corrosive wear is due to the reaction of an environment which may be lubricant or an oxygen in air with the contacting surfaces. The contacting surfaces react with an environment. The reaction product from the protective thin film on the contacting surface continuous formation and removal of the protective layer on the contacting surface having a relative sliding motion which is known as a corrosive wear. Okay? Now, we will discuss about the different types of minor wear. The first one is fretting. Now what is fretting? It occurs due to the low amplitude vibratory sliding motion between the two contacting surfaces. The normal load between the contact surface causes the adhesion between the asperities and tangential vibratory sliding motion cause rupture which results in wear. When the fretting occurs in the combination with corrosion, it is known as a fretting corrosion. Basically, fretting is a micro form of adhesive or abrasive wear. The normal load between the contacting surface causes the adhesion between the asperities and the tangential vibratory sliding motion causes rupture and which is resulting wear. 
when the fretting occurs in the combination with corrosion, it's known as a fretting corrosion. Okay. As many corrosion products are harder than their parent metal, fretting corrosion may also lead to the abrasion. Okay, so this is what about the fretting. Next one is solid erosion. Okay, now what is solid erosion? The solid erosion occurs when the solid particles impede on a solid surface. The solid erosion rate of wear depends on the angle of strike of particles on solid. Okay, due to ingested sand particles, the solid erosion is found in helicopter, propellers, aircraft propellers, sand blaster, nozzle, etc. Now, next minor wear is fluid erosion. Now, what is fluid erosion? It is a minor wear of a solid surface due to the impact of liquid stream or liquid particles. There are two types of fluid erosion. First one is liquid impact and second one is cavitation erosion. Now what is liquid impact erosion? When the small liquid particles strike the solid surface at high speed, the high contact pressures are generated on the solid surface. This contact pressure exists to yield strength of the most of the material. Due to this plastic deformation or fracture occur from a single impact or a repeated impact, resulting in pitting or erosion of the surface. This phenomenon is known as liquid impact erosion. Now, erosion of the steam turbine plates and rain erosion of the aircraft surface are some examples of liquid impact erosion. Now, what is cavitation erosion? When the pressure in any part of the liquid flow place passage reaches the vapor as shown of the liquid, liquid start vaporizing and the large number of small vapor bubbles are formed. In addition, at low pressure, the air dissolved in liquid is released, resulting in formation of air bubbles. These vapor and air bubbles are carrying along with the flowing liquid. On reacting the high pressure zone, these bubbles suddenly collapse. Okay? Uh, or uh, implode as the vapor contains to liquid again. So moreover, these bubbles may also collapse even at a point where they are formed because of the momentary local increase in pressure. Because of the sudden collap collapsing of bubbles the surrounding liquid versus in them, this process of formation of bubble and their lapsing is called cavitation. Okay, now we will discuss about the factor uh, affecting the wear rate. Okay, so there are different factors which affect the wear rate. First one is material of contacting surface. Generally, the softer the material, wear at fast rate. Okay, the material with a reasonably good wear resistance should be us contacting surface have a relative motion. Use of similar material for the both of the contacting surface should be avoided. Okay, so softer material uh, for the softer material wear rate is high, and for the harder material wear rate is low. So material of contacting surface is the most important factor for the wear. Next one is surface finish. The asperities on the contacting surface are responsible for abrasive wear. Better surface finish reduces the rate of wear. If the surface is rough, then it will uh, wear rate will be increases. Okay, so surface wear is also the uh, factor which affects the wear rate. Next one is surface hardness. The rate of wear is inversely proportional to the surface hardness. Higher the surface hardness, lower is the rate of wear. Okay, now next one is load. Okay, next factor is load. The rate of wear is directly proportional to the load. Okay, if the load is heavy, then the rate of wear is also high. If load is low, then rate of wear is also low. Next phenomenon is uh, temperature. Uh, next factor is temperature. The phenomenon of adhesion accelerates at high operating temperature. Hence, with increasing in operating temperature, the rate of wear is also increasing. Okay, so at high temperature, rate of wear is also high. Low temperature, rate of wear is low. Thank you for watching this video.